Today we're going to talk about composition of functions. By the end of this video, you should be able to find the composite function given various functions, and you should be able to find the domain of a composite function. First, a couple definitions. Given two functions, f of x and g of x, the composite function can be written like this, which is the same as f of g of x written like this, which is also the same as this notation. And this is red f of g of x. This middle notation is the one that you probably saw in Algebra 2. The one that we are going to primarily use in pre-calculus is this first notation. The domain of a composite function, if you're talking about the composite function f of g of x, is the set of x values that satisfy g of x such that the g of x values satisfy f of x. We'll talk more about this toward the end of the notes. First, we're given two functions, f of x equals 2x squared minus 3 and g of x equals 4x plus 1. We want to find g of f of 2. This is the same as writing it like this. So when we are evaluating compositions that have a specific value given for x, we're going to start on the inside. We're going to take 2 and plug it in to f of x. So we're trying to find out what f of 2 is. So if you plug 2 in for x in f of x, you end up with 5. Now, we know that f of 2 is equal to 5. So if we plug 5 in for f of 2, we get that g of 5 is what we're trying to find. So if we plug 5 in, we end up with 21. So this means that g of f of 2 is 21. The fun thing with compositions is that you can compose a function with itself. So g of g of 2 is the same as doing g of g of 2 written this way. Again, we're going to start on the inside. We need to figure out what g of 2 is. So I'm going to plug 2 in for x in g of x. And I get 9. So now we know that g of 2 is equal to 9. And we're going to substitute that back in up here. So now we are trying to find g of 9. So if I plug 9 in for x, I end up with 37. So this means that g of g of 2 equals 37. This time, we're using the same functions, but we are trying to find f of g of x. So we do not have a specific value to plug in for x. Again, this is the same as f of g of x, written this way. So this means we are going to take the entire function g of x and plug it in for x in f of x. 
So we are trying to find f of 4x plus 1, which is g of x. So if we plug that in, we have this function, and we need to simplify. So we need to start by squaring that binomial, which gives us 16x squared plus 8x plus 1. If you need to write that out in more steps, you can do that. Then we need to distribute the 2. And lastly, combine like terms. So we have that f of g of x is 32x squared plus 16x minus 1. Similarly, if we want to find g of f of x, we are going to have to take f of x and plug it in to g of x. So we're going to take this entire function and plug it in for x. So we're trying to find g of 2x squared minus 3. So if we plug that in for x, we get 4 times 2x squared minus 3 plus 1. All we need to do here is distribute and combine like terms. So we have 8x squared minus 12 plus 1, which gives us 8x squared minus 11. So this is g of f of x. It's worth noting here that f of g of x and g of f of x are usually not equal to each other. We'll talk about what happens when they are equal in the next video. Here we have two new functions. We have j of x equals 1 over x plus 2 and k of x equals 4 over x minus 1. If we want to find j of k of x, this is the same as trying to find j of k of x written this way. So we need to take all of k of x and plug it in for x in j of x. So we are trying to find j of 4 over x minus 1. And this is going to get a little messy here. So instead of x, I'm going to put this entire equation. Now, here we have a complex fraction. You learned about these in Algebra 2. To simplify a complex fraction, the easiest thing to do is find the LCD, or the least common denominator, between all parts of the fraction. So if we look here, the only little fraction inside the big fraction is 4 over x minus 1, and the denominator of that is x minus 1. So our LCD is x minus 1. Now we are essentially going to multiply this fraction by 1, which is allowed. And as you might remember from elementary school, sometimes you could be multiplying by 2 over 2, or 12 over 12, or something, as long as you're multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same value. So I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 1. And since I'm multiplying the denominator by x minus 1, I will distribute to both parts of the denominator. Now, in the numerator, we have 1 times x minus 1 which is just x minus 1. In the denominator, x minus 1 times 4 over x minus 1. 
the x minus 1s cancel out, and we are just left with 4. Then we have 2 times x minus 1, and we're going to go ahead and distribute there. Then we can combine like terms and be done. So our final answer is x minus 1 over 2x plus 2. Similarly, if we want to find j of j of x, we have to take j of x and plug it back in for x in j of x. So we're trying to find j of 1 over x plus 2. Again, we're going to end up with a complex fraction. So we need to take our function for j of x and plug in 1 over x plus 2. This time, our LCD is x plus 2, because that is our least common denominator of all of the small fractions. So we're going to multiply everything by x plus 2. Then in the numerator, we have 1 times x plus 2, which is x plus 2. In the denominator, the x plus 2's cancel out here, and we just have 1. And then we need to distribute 2 times x plus 2. Then we just need to combine like terms. So we have x plus 2 over 2x plus 5. And this is our final answer for j of j of x. So the algebra involved in simplifying some of these compositions can be a little tedious, but overall the concept is pretty easy. You're just plugging one function into another. Now let's take a look at domain. We want to find the domain of f of g of x if f of x is 1 over x plus 3 and g of x is 6 over x minus 2. Our definition stated that the domain is the set of all x values that satisfy g of x such that g of x values also satisfy f of x. So let's start by finding the domain of each of these original functions. We always need to start with the domain of whatever the second function is, in this case g of x. So our domain of g of x, since g of x has a denominator, we need to check and see what values will make the denominator equal 0. So our domain is everything except 2. So x such that x does not equal 2. Then we need to find our domain for f of x. f of x is also a fraction, so we need to look at the denominator and see what values of x will make the denominator equal to 0. So our domain is x such that x does not equal negative 3. So our definition said we need to make sure that g of x satisfies the domain for f of x. So g of x cannot equal negative 3. So let's do a little algebra. If I take g of x and set it equal to negative 3, let's see what we get. If we multiply both sides by the denominator, we get this. If you do a little bit of algebra, you end up with x equals 0. So this means if we plug in 0 into g of x, that will give us negative 3, which we are not allowed to plug in to f of x. So we are not allowed to plug in 0 either. So our domain for the composition
is x such that x does not equal 2 or 0. Because if we plug in 2, that does not work with the domain of g of x. And if we plug in 0, we end up getting a value that we cannot plug in to f of x. Let's look at one more example. Find the domain of a of b of x if a of x is 4 over x plus 3 and b of x is negative 1. Again, we want to start by finding the domain of the second function listed here, which is b of x. b of x is a fraction, so if we plug in 0 for x, we end up dividing by 0, which is not allowed. So the domain of b of x is x, such that x does not equal 0. We then need to look at the domain of a of x. We need to see what values of x will make the denominator equal 0, which in this case is negative 3. So we get that b of x cannot equal negative 3. Otherwise, we'll end up dividing by 0. So let's do a little bit of algebra. b of x equals 3. Solve this. You end up with x equals 1 third. So if we plug in 1 third for x into b of x, we will end up with negative 3, which we then cannot plug in to a of x. So our domain for a of b of x is x such that x cannot equal 0 or 1 third.